Hello and welcome back fellas to another video where we continue to build our mobile endless runner using Unity. It's been a while, I was actually really busy, I did a lot of bigger projects at my job lately. As you might or might not know, I work as a software developer in the e-commerce industry and since Corona our requests nearly skyrocketed. So I had a lot of stuff to do, but of course this project is alive, maybe more alive than ever because we are moving closer and closer towards release. But we have a lot of stuff to take care of first of course. You already see some footage of our current state of the game playing in the background. I think it's pretty decent already. In the last episode we added ourselves some ragdoll physics so that the player has a decent death animation when he gets hit by an enemy and I also expanded the functionality so that he gets also knocked out by obstacles if he doesn't watch out. In today's video we will continue development of course and we will create ourselves a quick and easy save and load system which is working on mobile. In our case that will be relatively simple since we only have a few variables we need to store such as our total coins which we will need since that's our in-game currency and also we want to save our character and level unlocks and also some basic settings. In other cases this will be much more complex but the core concepts are basically the same. I will guide you through the implementation step by step guys, so grab a coffee and follow through if you want to see how it's done. If you want to support me and want to stay in touch, please like this video and also consider subscribing to my channel. This helps me out a lot and enables me to do more videos more frequently. And also hit the bell icon to get noticed when the next video is out. But enough talking, let's jump straight into Unity and let's start coding. Alright, so first let's navigate to our scripts folder and let's create ourselves a new script and let's call it game data. This will basically just be an object which holds our data we want to save, so we don't need to extend the money behavior, so let's get rid of that. We can also delete the start and update methods. Now we need to make our class able to be serialized. Uh, we just type in in square bracket system.serializable right above our class name right here. And also guys a quick side note before we start implementing our class. Data serialization will not work with Unity specific data types such as Vector3 and so on. We need to stick to the C Sharp specific data types. In our case that's totally fine and won't matter at all but I just wanted to point it out anyways. Alright now let's create ourselves some fields for our data. First off we need to save our progress. Um, for that I create a new int for our total coins. And also create an int for our total distance we traveled. Alright, now let's move on to our unlocks. I basically just want to remember which levels the player already has unlocked. I will use a simple bool array for this, this will do the job. So let's create ourselves a new bool array and let's call it level unlocked. And I will also do the same thing for characters unlocked. Now let's move on to our settings. To be honest I haven't finally decided which options I will offer the player, but there will be at least some sort of a language switch. and also a quality switch. And I use in for both values, this will do the job just fine. Okay, so now I want to define some default values which gets used when there is no save file. For that let's use the constructor of our class. Alright, let's see here. Total coins will be zero. Total distance is zero as well. And for the levels unlocked I will lock everything except for the first one. Same goes for characters unlocked. I'm not quite sure yet how many levels or playable characters we will have, but I will go with 5 for each right now. I also set the language to 0, which will be English, and the quality to 1, which will be something like medium tier. For the language and quality I will create enums later on to make it more readable in code. The numbers just represent predefined options right now. But for now it's totally fine I guess since our option screen isn't implemented anyways. So let's go with it. Alright, that's about it for our game data class. Next let's build our actual save system. So let's go back to Unity. And let's create ourselves a new class. And let's call it save system. First we can also get rid of extending our mono behavior as well as the start and the update method. Our class will be static since there's no need to instantiate it. Then we will need to access some additional namespaces so let's add some using directives next. First we will need system.io. This basically contains stuff to handle files. And we will also need to access system.runtime.serialization.formatters dot binary. 
The binary formatter will help us to write our serialized object as binary data to our file. We could also use something like JSON or XML to store our data, but then it basically would be very easy for the user to just open up the file outside of the game, read, understand it and just enter the amount of coins he wishes to have. So we use a binary format to make cheating a little bit harder. Alright, now we will need two methods for our save system to work, save and load. Let's start by creating our save method. I declare the method as static so it can be accessed without having an instance of the object and I also need game data which I want to save as a parameter. First we need to define where we want to save our file. So I create a new variable called path and we can use application, persistent data path. This will give us a relative path to where we can basically save stuff. This is working on all devices and operating systems. And then I add the file name. Uh, since we use binary data, we can basically choose whatever file extension we want. So I just call it gamedata.qnd for now. Okay, next let's create an instance of a binary formatter. I just call it formatter. This object will help us translating our object into binary data for us. And we will also need a file stream to write data. As parameters, we just hand over our path and we also need to specify a file mode. In our case, we can use create. Create will create a new file and if the file already exists, it will override it. Now we can access our formatter and use the serialize method. And I hand over the file stream and our data object. That's it. Now let's not forget to close our file stream and we are basically done. The load method is very similar, so I create a new static method and call it load. But instead of having a parameter, we want our game data as a return value. Now, we also need our path. Uh, since I don't want uh, any redundant code, I will create a new method for this really quick. I call it getPath. And I just copy over and return our code from the save method. Now every time we need a path to our save file, we can just use the getPath method. Okay, now let's uh, go back to our load method. Um, we also need a binary formatter and a file stream as well. This time I choose the file mode open instead of create. Like above, we can now access our formatter, but this time we choose deserialize to load our data instead of writing it. And we will store our data inside of a variable of the type game data. Since the deserialize method returns a generic object type of type object, we need to perform a typecast. We do this with the as operator and then our class name. Then we of course need to close our file stream when the operation is finished. And let's also return our data. Alright, almost there. Now what we want to do is to take care of what's gonna happen if there's no such thing as a save file, because otherwise it's gonna crash. So I want to check if the file exists before we open up our file stream. Um, we can do this with file.exists and then we hand over our path. But what I really want to do is to take action if the file doesn't exist, so I negate my statement with an exclamation mark. So if my file doesn't exist, I create a new game data object. This will store our basic default data and I call it empty data. And I also use the save function to save it. Now we can return our empty game data object. And that's basically it for our simple save and load system, guys. It's not much more to it. All we need to do right now is to integrate our new system into our game. So let's switch right back to Unity and let's take care of that next. Alright, so first let's take a look at our game manager script. And let's open it up in Visual Studio. Our game manager is basically responsible for handling very basic stuff. And from now on we also want him to take care of loading and saving data. So let's create a new field for our game data object. Uh, instead of start we will use the awake method to start loading the data as soon as the script instance was loaded. Now we just need to set our game data equals and then to save system load and that's it for the loading part guys. Now of course we also need to save data. Over here we have our game over method uh, which gets called every time the player dies or the level is over. Before showing the game over menu we want to save our progress so let's just write um, game data total coins 
and then plus equals our player coins to add the coins from our current run to the total amount. And we also do the same thing for the distance. So game data, total distance, plus equals, and then I just copy over what I use right here to show the distance in the UI. Um, and this just runs the float value of our player position to a better readable int value. Okay, now we just type save system and we call our save method and we hand over our game data. All right, done. Now our progress should get saved at the end of every run. Now, of course, we need a place to display our total coins. I actually want to do this in the main menu because like mentioned, the coins will also be our main in-game currency. So let's go back to Unity and let's open up our main menu scene. As you see, we currently don't have the UI to display our total coins. So I will quickly go back to our level one scene and I will copy over the UI from our actual levels. So now back to our main menu, paste them, and I just drag them into our UI. I'll leave the position and style how it is right now. I think that does the job and I can optimize it in the future if I want to. Next, I want to create a main menu manager, which will have a similar task like the game manager in our levels, but just for the main menu. So let's first create an empty game object and let's call it main menu manager. And let's also create a new script and I call it main menu manager. Now I just drag my script onto the empty game object and let's open it up in Visual Studio. First, we need a field for our game data. Then again, we use the awake method to load our data. Now, I will also need some code to update the UI. So let's add a using directive to access UI classes. And now let's create ourselves two new fields uh, from type of text, one for the coins and one for our distance. Then let's create a new method and I call it refresh UI. And here I just need to sync our UI text with the values from our game data object. Okay, that should be it. Now let's go back to Unity and let's test out real quick if that works. Okay, doesn't seem to work. Um, and we also have some errors in our console, so let's have a look. Okay, you see, um, we forgot to drag our UI object into the slot in the main menu script in the inspector, so let's uh, take care of that real quick. All right, so now let's test it out again. So, let's start a new game and let's try to collect some coins. Okay, now, uh, when I go back to the main menu, it should have carried over our coins. Okay, good, that works properly. Now let's see if it adds coins properly when I start a new game. Remember, we have 8 coins at the moment. Alright, so I collected 9 coins, I guess. So the 8 coins from the first run plus our 9 coins should be 17 coins in total right now. Alright, and there we go. Seems to work properly. Now, let's try if our data gets carried over when we exit and restart the game. And start again. As you see, it works totally fine. Alright guys, and that's basically it for today's episode. We managed to create ourselves a simple system to save and load our game data. We will expand this in the future if we need it, but for now it's totally fine. In the next episode, we will take care of spawning and we will refactor our current method with a pooling system. This will give us a much better performance. I'm pretty much looking forward to this. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please drop a like and also consider subscribing if you want to see more tutorials and devlogs like this. Our next sessions will be very interesting because we are moving closer and closer towards release. Also, I really appreciate your feedback, guys, so please make sure to share your opinion in the comments and also feel free to ask me any question that you want. With not much further to do, guys, thanks for watching, see you in the next video, take care, bye bye.